Okay, so let's get on with it. Mm, let me start with an example. So suppose the price of a bond today is mm, how much? Let's say a hundred dollar. Okay. This is the price. There is also something called a face value of a bond. Let's just call it the value. value of the bond is 200. What does this mean? Now, when you buy a bond, it's going to have a face value. So if the face value is 200, and if it, it, it's a one-year bond, that effectively means that at the end of one year, you will be paid 200. That's it. So when you buy a bond, this is all that will be given, is that how much money will be given to you at the end of the period? So that raises the question, who determines the price of the bond? Well, that really depends on the market forces. Now, if there is very high demand for the bond, obviously price will go up. If there is low demand for the bond, price will go down. And similarly, if a lot of bond is issued, supply is very high, uh, price will go down. But if supply isn't that high and there aren't that many bonds available in the market, mm, price will be relatively uh, high. So let's look at this scenario. The bond that we're concerned with has a face value of 200. So at the end of the period, uh, at, at the maturation period, you will earn 200. Anyone who holds the bond will get 200. And today, if you want to buy this bond, it's going to cost you 100. So that means you have a 100% interest. You pay 100, and one year later, you're going to get 200. So your price has doubled, that's 100% interest. Now, obviously in real life, it's usually not more than 10%, but you know, 100 is a nice number, for example, so it's 100. Now, suppose what the government wants to do is they want to buy, uh, they want to implement an expansionary monetary policy. Okay, so expansionary monetary policy means they want to increase the money supply in the economy. To increase the money supply in the economy, what are they going to do? They are going to buy bonds. When the government starts to buy bonds, this much you will understand, bond prices starts to go up because there's an increased demand for bonds more people are trying to buy bonds. Price is going to go up. So suppose this is PB1 was 100, but because of the rise in demand, the price of bond now is 120 taka. Price have gone up by 20. But here's the thing, the value this 200, this is not going to change. Whoever issued this bond, it can be the government, it can be a private organization, doesn't matter. Whoever has issued this bond has already stipulated that they're going to pay you 200 and no more. So now let's look at what's happened. You can buy this bond for 120 taka today, but and at the end of the year, you're going to get 200 taka. So what is the, let's call this I1, what is the new interest rate? It's definitely less than 100% because 100% 100 interest on 120 would be if you were getting that 240 taka. But you're not getting 240, you're getting 200 taka. And if my calculation is correct, I think interest rate is now 66%. So you see, 
government starts to buy bonds. When they buy bonds, they increase the price of the bond. In our example, price was 100. It went up to 120. But the value of the bond is not changing. As a result, interest rate has fallen. I mean, let's, let me give you an extension of this example. Suppose instead of 120, price had gone up to 150. What would the interest rate had been like that? You're buying something for 150. At the end of the year, you're going to get back how much? 50 taba. So for an investment of 150, you're going to get 50. So interest rate is 33%. Same calculation here as well. For an investment of 120, you're going to get 80. And let's look at contractionary monetary policy. And government wants to decrease the money supply. So basically what they do is they sell bonds. When they sell bonds, you will understand what happens here. Supply goes up. As a result, bond price begins to fall. So suppose price of 100, well, price now falls to uh, 80. It's become cheaper. Remember, once again, the value has not changed. The value is still 200. And if you buy the bond now for 80, you're going to get that 200 at the end of the year. So what is the interest that you're facing now? For an investment of eight, yeah, for an investment of 80, how much are you going to get? You're going to get 120. So 150%. So interest rate used to be 100%. It's gone up to 150%. And so here, interest rate has gone up. So, okay. So let me just sum it up very quickly. Money demand, easy enough to understand what's going on. When we come to money supply, all we know is that it's a straight line because money supply is not affected by market forces. It's determined completely by the government. And the government decide whether they want money supply to increase or decrease in the economy or stay at the same level. So the question is, how does the government increase or decrease the money supply? Because it's not a question of just taking money away from people or giving them more money. They do it through something called open market operations. Basically what they do is they buy bonds or sell bonds. So when the government begins to buy up a lot of bonds, the price of bonds go up and as price go up, interest begins to fall. Let's take a look. Let me actually show this to you all graphically. See if it makes more sense now than previously. So we have money demand. We have money supply. Um, this is the interest we have and this is the money supply. Okay, now what the government want is to increase money supply. So increase money supply means they want to implement an expansionary monetary policy. So when the government implements an expansionary monetary policy, they want to start buying bonds. So they started buying bonds so that means that government is giving money to the people. Government is buying bonds and in exchange, they're handing money to the people. When people have more money at hand, obviously the money supply is increasing. When, but at the same time, 
as the government is buying bonds, bond prices are going up. And as a result, interest is falling. And we notice that here as well, is that interest rate has fallen. And so now we have a new money supply. Well, this is bright. So I hope this is clear enough to all of you. Uh, the Just looking at the graph, it's pretty straightforward to understand what will happen if money supply increases or if money supply decreases. But it's also important for you guys to understand the mechanism. Money supply is increasing, sure, but how is money supply increasing? And as a result, what effect is that going to have on interest rate and how? And the same thing for money supply decreasing. So it's not enough to understand this graphically, but you will have to know the mechanics behind it as well.